Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. Sure. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and I would like to welcome you to the finale of my seemingly never-ending parade of 2013 Year in Review videos. When I sat down near the end of 2013 to try and come up with a top 10 list, I realized that I hadn't really played that many games that I felt passionate about, so I decided to try this different awards style year in review. In the end, I think this has had its pluses and minuses. I'm proud of the fact that I was able to actually produce all these videos in a short amount of time, but they're not really getting that many views, so probably you guys aren't as glad I could produce them as I am. I know that there's a select group of you out there who will watch pretty much everything I do, and for that I would like to say a humble thank you. With that out of the way, let's get to the award. My favorite game of the year. Even though I couldn't really muster a top 10 this year, I do have three favorite games that I want to highlight. Up first is a game that wasn't even released in 2013. In fact, it's not technically been released at all. It's Hearthstone. I was actually at PAX East when Hearthstone was announced, and at the time I can tell you I could not have cared less about that game. I just didn't see why Blizzard would close down a perfectly good CCG, and in its place, create a brand new digital-only game. It just didn't make any sense. I turned my nose up at the booth, I didn't even go, I didn't even give it a second look in the exhibition hall. And then, months later, I saw someone playing the beta on YouTube, and it was at that point that I thought, hey, you know, this game might actually be for real. In retrospect, I'm not even sure why I doubted Blizzard for a second. This is their MO, it's exactly what they do. They look at a genre, they look at every game that's come before them in that genre, then they make the definitive game for that genre. They did it with StarCraft II and the RTS, they did it with World of Warcraft and the MMO, and they just might be doing it with Hearthstone and the digital CCG. I love Magic the Gathering, okay? I L-O-V-E love that game. I've been playing it since beta. And I don't mean beta test, I mean beta edition. I've been playing Magic longer than some of you have been alive, and I love it. But I love Hearthstone because it's not magic. Now eventually I want to do a video where I can elaborate on that a little bit, and a year-end award video is obviously not the place to do that, but let me just end up by saying I love magic, but I love Hearthstone because it differentiates itself from magic and makes clearly different choices. It has creatures, it has spells, it has mana, but it does that in a refreshing new way that's also at the same time familiar and old. And that's what made it one of my favorite games of 2013. And yeah, I know it didn't come out in 2013, but I really didn't play that many games I was passionate about, so cut me a break, alright? Next, I want to spotlight a game that brought me a lot of joy and a lot of frustration in 2013, and that is Rogue Legacy. This game takes everything I love about the random rogue-likeishness of The Binding of Isaac and wraps it in a persistent progression system that helps you move through the game deeper and deeper each time you play. The idea that your heir takes up your sword upon your death and goes off to try to bring glory to the family name is just wonderful. I love that concept and I love how it feeds right into the idea of progression every generation being better than the generation before it, and moving forward until you finally best that damn castle. Rogue Legacy really has a complete package going for it. The gameplay is extremely tight, the artwork is very good, and the music, as I mentioned in a previous award, is absolutely outstanding. The only thing that really keeps Rogue Legacy from being a modern classic on the level of A Binding of Isaac is the fact that the replayability is limited. When you're actually progressing through the game, you want to replay it as much as you possibly can. But once you've leveled your character up, and you've bested the game, there's really not a whole lot of reason to come back. Unlike Binding of Isaac, where you're restarting a fresh run every single time, in Rogue Legacy you would have to start all the way back from the bottom and work your way up once again, and that wasn't really that appealing to me once I had made my way through. So in the end, maybe I'll put 30 hours into this game instead of 300, and that somehow doesn't really feel like a flaw, but it is a negative that's worth mentioning. However, it doesn't change the fact that Rogue Legacy was one of my favorite games of 2013. Now finally, the time is here to talk about my favorite game of 2013, my game of the year. This is a game that inspired me to go out on Black Friday. Actually, excuse me. Black Thursday, because I guess Black Friday starts at 8 o'clock on Thanksgiving night now. This is also a game that might have nearly cost me a thumb. 
Now I can't conclusively link this, but after a four hour play session, I felt a twinge of pain in my thumb. Later that evening I had a 102 degree temperature and a thumb swollen to three times its normal size. Now a run of antibiotics did save my digit, but this game inspired me to play so much that it might have been the cause of a nearly life-threatening injury. So what game is this that can cause me to disregard my physical health? What game is this that can cause me to buy a 3DS XL on Black Friday? Honey, if you're listening to this, we can talk about it later. Well, quite simply, it's my 2013 game of the year. It's Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. So before we go any further, let me just make an admission here. And some of you might lose respect for me after this, but it has to be said. I've never, ever enjoyed a 3D Zelda game. Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, all of those. I tried to play them. I could not do it. I absolutely couldn't do it. It wasn't what I wanted out of Zelda. This wasn't the direction I ever wanted the series to go in. As other games forged into the 3D world, and I kind of was okay with it, I just wasn't with Zelda. So as you might imagine, this hit that particular nostalgic bone that hadn't been stroked in quite some time for me. But the thing that really makes this a game of the year for me is the fact that it didn't just rely on that nostalgia. It did enough new things to not just make it a great revamp of an old game, but to make it a wonderful game, period. Even when you thought this game was making a misstep, like allowing you to rent all the dungeon weapons ahead of time, it actually turned out to be a great way to expand play, giving you new combat options and allowing you to do a little bit of somewhat non-linear progression through the game. I just honestly think that this was as near perfect a Zelda game as you could possibly make in modern times. It had everything that I would want, it had everything that I would need, and it had so much more. It surprised me, but at the same time it felt familiar. I really enjoyed this game, and I played so much of it in such a small period of time that even though I've only owned it for about a month and a half, it's still easily my favorite game of 2013. Hearthstone, Rogue Legacy, and The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, my favorite games of 2013. Now you will notice some major absences from this list, things like The Last of Us, Bioshock Infinite, Saints Row 4, why aren't they on there? Well, I didn't play them, and how the hell can I put games I didn't play on my favorite games list? Doesn't really work out, now does it? If you'd like to tell me about your favorite games from 2013, I'd invite you to do so in the comments below. Otherwise, stick around here for more year in review. Right, we're finished with that. Um, stick around here for more videos, probably soon. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.